Hello, welcome to GD exam preparation class. I am your host and instructor, Ruben Herrera. And on this lesson, my friends, we are going to have an introduction to algebra. Yay! This is everybody's favorite subject. Very nice. And one of the things that I like to do for my algebra lesson, my friends, I like to start from the very bottom. I like to start from the very, very beginning and explain some of the terms and some of the lingo of algebra so that we can all understand what all these things in algebra means. And then after, it's like we're going to learn how to speak algebra first. It's like a game, too. We're going to learn the rules of the game first before we start playing the game. So we're also going to do the same thing with algebra. We're going to learn the language, we're going to learn the rules, and then we're going to start speaking or playing with algebra. Okay, my friends? So first of all, in algebra, we have letters, letters like this, A, B, C, D, uh, and most of the times these letters are going to be lowercase letters. And these letters, my friends, in algebra, we call them variables, okay? So what is a variable? A variable is a letter which contains or has a value, which value we do not know, but yet we need that value. OK, so that's what we call variables in algebra, you know, letters that represent a value yet that value. We don't know it. We don't know it yet, but we need that value. OK, also in algebra, we have numbers, numbers like this, two, three, four, five. And we also have like this little symbol right here that is pi. Pi is equals to 3.14, and these right here, these numbers and symbols, right, and this symbol right here that we have in algebra, we call them constants. Why we call them constants? Well, that's because they have a fixed value or a value that is constant, is constantly the same. For example, what is the value of number 2? 2. two. Is, is, it, is it always the value of 2? Two. Uh, two? Of course it is. The value never changes. The same thing with number three, number four, uh, with any number, also with pi. Pi is equals to 3.14. The value never changes. It fixed and is constant. Very nice. So, so far in algebra, we know that we have variables uh, and then we also have constants. Okay, my friends. In algebra, we also have this. Once we put the constant and the variable together, we have something that looks like this. And this, my friends, we call them algebraic terms. Or, for short, we call them terms. So whenever we put, in other words, whenever we put a variable and a constant together, and usually we're always going to put the constant first and then the variable, this is going to be called a algebraic terms, or for short, we call it a term. Okay, so it's like these two are getting married and they become a term or become an algebraic term. And just like when a couple gets married, one of the spouses changes the name. Once these two get married, or once these two get together, the constant right now changes its name to now is called a coefficient. Okay, very good. The constant now is called a coefficient once we put it together with a variable. Okay, and by the way, what are these variables and this constant, well, now called a coefficient, what are they doing together? They are multiplying together, okay? So the variable, once we put a constant and a variable together, they're multiplying each other, but it's not a multiplication that we're going to perform, at least not just yet. We just know that they're multiplying, but that's all they're doing. We're not going to solve for that yet, okay? So they become an algebraic, an algebraic term, I'm sorry, or for short, we're just going to call it, we're just going to call it term. And then the constant will become a coefficient. Very nice. Okay. Now, next, my friends, what we have is that also a 
single constant can also be an algebraic term or a term and that's perfectly fine maybe you know the constant doesn't want to get married to the variable and they want to be by themselves and that's perfectly fine they want to stay single so a single constant by itself can also be an algebraic term or term okay also my friends a variable can also be a single variable can decide to stay single and that's perfectly fine and it can also be an algebraic term or term for short okay very nice my friends so also now we're gonna have this right here we have uh, what we call an algebraic expression okay an algebraic expression, my friends, is nothing else and nothing more than the fancy term for an algebra problem, okay? An algebra problem is an algebraic expression. It's a mathematical expression that consists of variables, numbers, and operations. So, for example, if you notice right here, my friends, I have one term right here, and then I have a second term in here. Okay, and then I have a third term in here. And I have three terms, and I know this because these terms are separated by these symbols right here, which these symbols right here, these plus signs are these are representing an operation, an operation of a sum. Okay, so at, once again, an algebraic expression or an expression is an algebra problem. Okay very nice an algebra problem that also have one or two or you know or several terms okay now next now let us figure it out or let us let us uh see how many terms do we have here this is one of the things that on your GED exam you're going to be asked to identify how many terms are there in an algebraic expression so for example right here I can tell that we have three terms just like on this slide that I show earlier I have one term in here I have another term in here and then I have another term in here remember a constant can also be a term of its own and that's perfectly fine and I know that there are three terms because they are separated by this two operation symbols right here which they are addition very nice so how many terms do I have uh, I have here I have three terms very good okay next how many terms do I have on this on this expression right here okay there's only one terms absolutely notice that I have a coefficient a constant now called a coefficient and I have a variable but I don't see any other operation symbols right here so therefore there's only one term in here very nice next how many terms do I have here okay so it looks like I have one right here and then I have a second one right here and they're separated by this operation symbol which is subtraction so therefore I have two terms very nice okay next last but not least how many terms do I have here so it looks like I have one two and three and I have my operation symbols right here, which are tell which are separated these terms. So therefore, I have three terms, and that is correct. Very very nice, my friends. Okay. Now, another thing that on your GD exam you're gonna be asked to do, you're gonna be a, a, you're gonna have to identify, or you're gonna be asked to identify like terms. Okay, so what are like terms? Okay, like terms in algebra, my friends, are terms that have the same variables and the same exponents. The coefficients, in the other hand, do not need to match or do not need to be the same. Okay, for example, are these like terms in here? Well, notice that right here, my variable right here and my exponent is a squared and then right here on this 25 right here 
I have an a is squared too, so therefore, yes, these two terms are considered like terms. Even though they have the same 25 here, the same 25 here, this really doesn't matter. What matters is that they have the same variable and the same exponent on that variable. Okay, now let us look at this other example right here. Are these like terms? Okay, I notice that I have a 30 here and I have a 25 in here. These are not alike, these are different. But notice that I have right here the same variable and the same exponent on these two terms. So therefore, yes, these are like terms. In our next example, are these like terms, my friends? Well, notice that right here, the 30 and the 25, obviously they're different, but I do have the same variable in here. I have no exponent. Uh, and then right here also, right here on this A, I also have no exponent. Okay, but let me tell you something, my friends. Whenever we don't see any exponents on your variables, in algebra, it is assumed that there is a invisible one in there. Yes. So there is actually an exponent in there, but it's actually invisible, but only smart people can see it. Can you guys see it? Very nice. So there's an invisible one in there. So therefore, the fact that, you know, they don't, uh, you know, at first, you don't see any exponents in there, but there's actually an invisible one in there. But the fact that they have the same variable and the same invisible one exponent or no exponent, whichever way you want to see it. So this makes these two terms also like terms. Okay, very nice. Uh, let us look at some other examples. Okay, for example, are these two like terms? So notice that right here I have a variable right here with an exponent and right here I just have a variable but with no exponent. So these are not, these are not, these two are not alike even though I have the 25 in here and I have a 25 in here. We don't have the same variable and exponent here as we have it here. So therefore these are not like terms. Okay, let us look at another example. Are these like terms in here? So notice that I have a variable A in here and I have a variable B in here. So definitely these two are not like terms also. Okay, let us look at one more example right here. Are these like terms like one and two? We have actually two, uh, we have two constants right here. The fact that neither one of them have a variable nor a exponent, okay, these, my friends, are actually like terms, okay? The fact is that they either what makes them alike is the fact that they both don't have neither a variable nor a exponent, so these are like terms. Remember that the only thing that matters with like terms is that, that they have the same variable and the same exponent. Very nice, my friends. Now, another thing that you're going to be asked on your GED exam is going to be to identify factors. What are factors, my friends? Okay, so we know what odd numbers are and we know what even numbers are. You know, even numbers are like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and then we ha we know that odd numbers is like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, okay? But however, factors numbers are a little bit different. Factors number are, the factor is actually a fancy word for numbers that are multiples or divisibles, okay? Factors are numbers, my friends. Factors are numbers, my friends, that when we multiply them together, they will give us a whole number, not a decimal number, as a result. Okay, for example, this is what your GED is going to ask you. They're going to ask you to show or to select or to factor the number, a given number. For example, the number 12. What are the factors of number 12? Well, all the numbers that are divisible by 12. For example, is going to be the 1, the 2, the 3, the 4, the 6, and the 12. And why is that? 
Look, because 1, if we multiply 1 times 12, is equals to 12. If we multiply 2 times 6, is also equals to 12. If we multiply 3 times 4, is equals to 12. Uh, if we multiply uh, 2 times 6, is equals to 12. And also, you know, last but not least, 12 multiplied times 1 is equals to 12. So all these numbers right here are the factors of 12. Notice that the factors doesn't necessarily mean odd numbers or even numbers, as we have here, odd numbers and even numbers together. What matters with the factors is that all these numbers are multiples of 12. Okay, very nice. Let us factor one more number. Okay, what are the factors of number 16, for example? The factors of all the multiples of number 16 will be 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16, obviously. Very nice, my friends. All these numbers, if we do a combination of multiplying all these numbers right here, will be equals to 16. Very nice, my friends. Very nice. Thank you so much for watching this video lesson, and I hope that you guys enjoy it and that you learn from it. And I will see you guys in our next lesson. Have a great day. Bye-bye.